right today we are going to talk about ecg leads right and about before i go into detail of bipolar limb leads or unipolar limb leads or the chest leads right i want to tell you what exactly the word ecg lead means what is the meaning of ecg lead what is the real concept of ecg lead when we talk about ecg lead we have to learn it at three level ecg lead as a circuit ecg lead and its axis ecg lead and pattern derived derived from it right so let's start with it as we know that ecg lead is basically a set of electrode with the wires connected on one side with the ecg recording machine and other side electrodes are applied on the body surface and the purpose of those electrodes is to record the electrical activity of the heart as we know that uh, when there is heart is undergoing electrical activity like atrial depolarization and then ventricular depolarization and repolarization electrical vectors are produced is that right electrical electromotive forces are produced when heart is undergoing electrical events those electrical events of the heart those electrical events of the heart can be recorded by the ecg leads so let me tell you what is the meaning of lead right then we'll go into detail let's suppose here you are okay you are very happy because you are about to learn the real concept about the ecg here you are i'm not going to draw other organs now let's suppose here is your heart right i will just focus on major ventricular depolarization that when major part of the ventricle is undergoing depolarization the electrical current is moving downward and leftward if we talk about the frontal plane right why let me draw it here suppose this is left ventricle this is right ventricle this is interventricular septum right when depolar ventricular septum when ventricle is undergoing depolarization right in previous lectures i have explained into detail that first there is septal depolarization then there is major ventricular depolarization and after that there is basal part of the ventricle undergoing depolarization right now i will just focus that let's suppose ventricle major ventricular depolarization is going on when there is major ventricular depolarization going on ventricular cells undergo depolarization from endocardium to yes epicardium that wave of depolarization is spreading from inside to the outside of the ventricle and this movement of depolarization produces millions of vectors millions of electromotive forces right and these electrical vectors or electrical electromotive forces which are generated when the major ventricular depolarization is going on they, these forces can be represented by this vector which is showing the depolarization of right ventricle and can be represented by this vector which is showing the depolarization of the yes left, left ventricle and because right ventricle and left ventricle are undergoing depolarization simultaneously they are undergoing depolarization simultaneously so these two vectors can be added to each other and if we add these two vectors together the net vector will be as you know that uh, vector of left ventricular depolarization is more forceful as left ventricle is thicker and because it is thick right larger number of cells are undergoing depolarization so there is stronger vector produced by the left ventricular depolarization and relatively weaker vector is produced by right ventricular depolarization so when you add these two vectors together then we say there is mean vector right which is in frontal plane which is directed downward and leftward right what is this this is the mean this is the mean you can say qrs vector or we can say this is the mean electromotive force 
along with its magnitude which is represented by the length of the vector and its direction which is presented by direction of the arrow right this is mean electromotive force representing vector when major parts of the ventricles are undergoing depolarization or we can call it mean qrs vectors even though in previous lectures i told that initially there is septal depolarization which is rightward is that right and then major ventricular depolarization which is leftward and downward and then there is basal depolarization which is upward right but if we talk about only this vector this is mean vector mean vector mean average of all those vectors at at any moment mean does not mean cheap vector mean vector mean that there are millions of the vectors when they are added together right we end up with the mean qrs vector is it clear now let's suppose this is your heart and this is your mean vector which is representing yes major ventricular depolarization or now onward i will call this vector qrs vector right now if we want to make a lead now we come back if we want to look at the electrical activity of this heart right and how to record these electrical activity how to record these electrical activity before that a little concept as you know body is a volume conductor body is a volume conductor it has lot of electrolytes and fluid so it can conduct the conduct the currents if you don't believe it put your finger in any plug and check it for yourself electric plug don't do that anyway so what i'm saying our body as it has lot of fluid and electrolytes it's a very good conductor of the current so when this vector is moving when this electrical vector is generated by the depolarization of the major part of ventricles what happens that this electrical current spreads all over the body it spreads all over the body around all fluids around the heart and then it spreads into trunk and from the trunk this electrical current will spread into arms and legs is that right and this electrical current right which is generated by the electrical activity of the heart can be picked up from the surface of the body can be picked up from the surface of the body and recorded by ecg machine right now how to record it record it one way is that here is your ecg machine let's suppose this is your ecg machine it's a very simple galvanometer i'm going to make it a very simple galvanometer right and let's suppose that this is your needle right here is a drop of ink here is ecg paper moving is that right this paper is moving in this direction now let's suppose here is the positive electrode what is this positive electrode a positive terminal and this is the negative, negative terminal and if we apply positive terminal here and negative terminal on this end what will be we doing we will be doing we will we will be recording the electrical potential difference between the positive terminal and the negative terminal and this potential difference in these two points is being produced by the current depolarization currents or repolarization currents which are being generated by the cardiac electrical activity i will repeat it it's worth repeating that when heart is undergoing electrical events electrical vectors are being produced these electrical uh, vectors or events are being conducted throughout the body you can put electrode at any two points in the body any two points in the body and when this current is flowing it will be conducted in this area also and these electrode will measure the difference of potential between these two electrode if there is no electrical activity in the heart let's suppose if there is no electrical activity in the heart then nothing will be sensed by these two electrode and if there is electrical activity in the heart 
that is conducted in the body then these two points will sense the potential at negative terminal suppose point A right and point B if there is electrical activity in the heart right that will be conducted in this area actually everywhere including this area here we have put negative electrode there we have put positive electrode and these two electrode will record the potential difference right between the electrical potential at point A and the point B, B. that potential difference will basically lead to fluctuation of this needle is that right yes. is it clear now actually what we have done by this circuit by putting a positive electrode right which is also called exploring electrode and other side we have put negative electrode and in some other ECG leads arrangement we put a reference electrode right which has zero potential but here we have put one positive electrode other negative electrode these two electrodes along with their wires along with their wires on one side one side attached with the electrocardiograph machine and other side electrodes are applied on the body surface and completing a circuit this circuit is called circuit of the lead right this circuit is called circuit of the lead so now another thing whatever electrical potential is present at this shoulder the same will be conducted in the arm is that right in the same way whatever electrical potential is present at this left shoulder same will be conducted in the left arm so <coughs> for convenience actually rather than applying these leads negative terminal on the shoulder just for convenience it's easier to apply on the wrist it is easy, easier to apply on the wrist and in the same way positive terminal rather than putting there we can apply our wrist on the left side now we can say right arm has what negative terminal left left side left arm wrist has positive, positive terminal these two terminals along with their wires with the electrographic machine whole this system is called circuit of the lead right now this lead circuit actually how this lead is how this lead is recording the electrical activity or sensing the electrical activity this is the circuit right this is the circuit now I will give you an idea that let's suppose I put this lead system here right I put this lead system here this is your machine is that right here I put yes positive electrode is that right and there I put negative electrode and because these electrodes are making one positive pole other negative pole this lead should be having two poles so we will call it bipolar lead we call it bipolar lead and because this is applied on the limbs this must be called bipolar limb leads this should be called bipolar limb leads now before I go into detail I want to give you some simple example to understand actually you can imagine that this vector okay I will make it red color this vector red color or let's suppose before I go into that now this is an imaginary line which we are drawing between the electrodes I mean we can draw here this is an imaginary line which we have drawn between the negative terminal and the positive terminal or negative electrode or the positive electrode now this line represents the yes it is not the circuit of the lead this line is axis of the lead electrical axis of the lead right so you know what is the circuit of lead and what is the 
electrical axis of the lead right actually let's suppose if i put this positive electrode remove from here if i remove positive electrode from here and put the positive electrode here then electrical axis will become different direction so electrical axis of the lead is determined by the placement of the electrodes on the body electrical axis of the lead are determined by the placement of the electrode in the body again i will repeat if i put a negative electrode here positive electrode here this is the axis of the lead and this these two electrodes with wires connected with the machine this is the circuit of the lead so there is circuit of the lead there is axis of the lead now if we put negative electrode here and put positive electrode here or on the foot now imaginary line which draws the negative pole and the positive pole they are directed downward and leftward is that right so axis of the lead have changed so what is axis of the lead axis of a lead is an imaginary line drawn from the negative electrode or from the reference electrode towards the positive electrode which is also called exploring electrode is that right so this is axis of the lead now next concept which i want that you must be clear what is the pattern of the lead let me explain this first we take a simple example i have removed this circuit from there to here is that right let's suppose in your heart an electrical vector is directed like that here positive charges wave of depolarization is moving towards positive, positive electrode or we can say positive uh, wave of depolarization is moving towards exploring electrode now this exploring electrode is like a exploring eye of a boy young boy you know young boys the very exploring eyes you know what they are exploring all the times is that right nature always just imagine this is an eye of a young boy oh my god <laughs> positive electrode or exploring electrode is the i am this i i of the exploring boy why you are having a little smiles and this electrical vector is like a hot girl she is moving around and there is exploring i right now imagine if this girl is moving towards the positive electrode no sorry if this vector is moving towards the positive electrode or approaching the positive electrode is that right what will happen needle will of course positive electrode will be taking the potential from here to the electrocardiographic machine is that right the rule is that when positive charges move to the positive electrode deflection is positive deflection in the needle is upward uh, if there is no electrical activity here then there will be straight line then there will be straight line but as soon as okay i will remove this to show a simple diagram this is the electrical vector like a beautiful girl right it is approaching towards the positive electrode the exploring eyes of the boy when this vector is approaching that it's very natural to infer the deflection in the boy should be positive is that right the needle will go upward, upward. is that right so deflection is positive and of course now we imagine another thing imagine that if this electrode if this electrical activity in the heart is moving away from the positive electrode then what will happen everyone knows needle should go down when positive charges are moving towards the positive electrode deflection is upward or when a hot girl is moving towards the exploring eye of a young boy loaded with testosterone i think what will happen needle should go up 
and when that girl start moving away from the positive electrode away from the girl the boy will get disappointed and what will happen to deflection Down. downward is it clear i hope there's no much problem to remember this right so you always remember vector in the heart depolarization vector in the heart is like a sexy girl and the exploring electrode is like a naughty boy very alert and naughty boy he is looking at the movement right if vector is approaching deflection upward. upward i mean deflection of the needle of the galvanometer and if vector is going away deflection is downward, downward. now there is a question the real master question as i was telling girl moving towards positive deflection girl moving away negative deflection but it is possible also girl moving in this direction perpendicular to the axis of the vn of the boy perpendicular to the axis of the vn of the boy it means now electrical vector is moving perpendicular to the axis of the lead now this naughty boy is going to tell me deflection should be positive or negative yes please sir no deflection no deflection straight you are hopeless case straight line yes no deflection okay let me tell you a uh, to be very honest he is right there will be no net deflection but what really happens this is your axis of lead i will draw it with black lines this is the axis of the lead right negative electrode and positive electrode this is the circuit of the lead this is the axis of the lead is that right now if vector is perpendicular then what happens right let me put a vector which is perpendicular to the moving perpendicular to the visual axis of the boy what will happen listen we can put this vector as two component one component coming to the axis of the lead other component going away from the axis of the lead first the boy will get hopeful and then get as she passes by he gets disappointed you know that is that right so when he will become hopeful a little positive deflection when she passes by it become little negative deflection so this will be positive and negative both deflections but what equal in magnitude equal in magnitude, magnitude. so what will be the pattern here now i will show if this is a lead exploring electron from the boy with his eyes now you will tell me girl is moving towards deflection should be positive positive, positive. girl is moving away deflection should be negative. negative full disappointment right and if it is moving perpendicular then first it is moving towards the electrical axis of the lead and then moving away so this deflection will be little positive and then little negative both or in a net net deflection the voltage which is positive and voltage which is negative both are equal so net deflection is zero net deflection is zero so what did we learn that it's very important to know the axis of a lead and it is also very important to know the direction of what electrical vector of the heart axis of the lead is a different thing electrical vector in the heart is a different thing now here i want to make another few more terms clear that this is axis of the lead and if this is the vector if this is a vector this point 1 to point 2 point 1 to point 2 this is axis of the vector this is axis, axis of the vector so there is a axis of lead which is different thing axis of vector which is different, different thing do you understand no. you don't understand it okay let me tell you Uh, where you didn't understand what point you did not understand so this axis 
axis of lead and axis of vector how they are different how they are different okay very good question he say axis of the vector and axis of the lead how they are different are the same thing or different very important question i will make it here okay i will make three leads okay i'm going to make bipolar limb leads this if you apply negative on the right electrode on the right wrist which is equal to putting on the right shoulder and if you put positive here positive electrode here and or here both of them are making bipolar limb lead and this bipolar limb lead where electrodes are placed in such fashion they are called bipolar lead number one bipolar lead number one, one. now i will go back to explain this concept listen i'm going to explain the axis how the axis of leads are different from the axis of electrical activity of the heart is that right let's focus only on that axis of the lead is basically the boy line of the v n of the boy's eye and axis of the electrical activity of the heart is the line of movement of the girl right now we put three boys there if three boys are at three different positions will they see, see the same girl if they're looking at the same girl but they will see the girl from different angle yes. for example a boy who is looking from the front is that right if girl is moving like this a boy is there he will see front of the girl but if boy is there he will see the back of the girl on the right side he will see the lateral aspect of the girl but the true picture of the girl will be when many boys from different angles looking at the girl and make a add their information then you will know exactly what she is are you understanding yes is it clear even the boys are not so usually so cooperative anyway now come back I'm showing only one vector now. That vector is when major ventricular depolarization is going on. When major ventricular depolarization is going on, let's suppose this is the left ventricle and here is the right ventricle. And this is the vector of major ventricular depolarization. This is the movement of the girl. Is that right? This is now I'm giving a true example of what is happening in the heart. Then ventricle or QRS activity mean QRS vector is directed downward and leftward. One way to look at it is that you put negative electrode here and positive electrode here. So boy is here, and his line of VN is towards negative, and axis of the this lead is horizontal. Is that right? At zero angle. Now this is called we have made the limb lead number one. This is lead number one. Now we will do another thing. Let's suppose we put negative electrode here, right? And we put positive electrode here. We put the positive yeah. electrode here. Now axis of the lead will be the same as the previous lead or different? Different. Here, what we will do again? I will draw the machine. The circuit of this lead is. Different than the previous lead number one. Here, circuit of the lead is positive terminal, negative terminal. I have put the positive terminal here, right? And I have put the negative terminal here. Now, this is the circuit of bipolar limb lead two. What is this? Limb lead two. What is bipolar limb lead two? Bipolar limb lead two is circuit is made by two electrode, one with the positive terminal of the machine, other electrode with the negative terminal of the machine. Positive electrode is applied on the ankle on left leg, and negative electrode is applied on the right right wrist. So this is another exploring electrode. It is another exploring boy. Now there is one boy standing here, another boy standing. Here now, its line of VN is this. So axis of lead number two is directed downward and leftward. Axis of lead number one is from right to the left. We can make another boy there. We really want to see 
this cardiac vector and its electrical activity from different angles are you understanding yes, yes. so we can really know it more because it is only one boy looking at the girl from one angle he cannot know each and everything you have to look from front and back right and left and right so to record the electrical activity of the heart from another angle is you put the negative electrode here and you put the positive electrode here and here is your third galvanometer of machine right this is the negative electrode and here it is positive electrode here the axis of machine is axis of this lead is directed downward and leftward rightward sorry downward and rightward this is called limb lead number three. three now what we have done we have put three exploring eyes we have put three exploring eyes to monitor the movement of this ladylike vector is that right yes. we have made this circuit is the circuit of lead number one and this is the axis of lead number one this is the circuit of lead number two and this is the axis of lead number two is that right this is the circuit of lead number three limb lead number three and this is the axis of the lead number three is it clear yes. so it means when we change the position of the electrode we actually change the axis of the lead if we change the position of the boy we change the line of the vm visual axis you are understanding yes. clear yes. now this movement of the vector it has its own axis vector has its own axis axis mean that this vector is major ventricular depolarization right if i draw it more elaborately i will draw like this and this here in the tip of the arrow this is positive charges and here it is negative charges when major part of the ventricle is undergoing depolarization electromotive force is generated in the heart where wave of depolarization is moving downward and leftward in the frontal plane because if you look at horizontal plane it is downward leftward and backward but i am not talking about horizontal plane now vertical plane is as you are recording the things as a in the frontal plane frontal plane mean okay let me draw exactly what i mean by the frontal plane here you are now if we are recording any activity along the right this is frontal plane but if you are looking in frontal plane you are looking at the activity up to down down to up vertical plane and right and left axis vertical axis and horizontal axis but if you are looking anterior posteriorly if you are looking anterior posteriorly then it is horizontal plane let me explain let's suppose this is my heart heart is three dimensional this heart is three dimensional you can look at the front of the plane if you look from the front it is frontal plane frontal plane is exactly in what is this axis x axis x axis and y axis but you can look at anterior posteriorly also right if you are looking from front and then on the side and then on the back this is horizontal plane if you look at the heart on the front then on this side then on that side then you go on and look at the back then it is you are looking at horizontal plane i think you are not a boy let me explain if there is a girl here looking from the front then you see from the sides and then you go and look from the back even though she will really mind it but you look like that you are looking at her horizontal plane 
but if you are looking you are standing in front usually this is what you do you look from the top to uh, i shouldn't say bottom top to down and down to up or right to left or left to right this is frontal plane you're scanning the girl in frontal plane or you can scan the girl in horizontal plane in the same way about the electrical activity of the heart you can scan up and down right and left this is which plane frontal plane but if you're looking entro posteriorly how it looks electrical activity of the heart this is horizontal, horizontal plane now when ventricle undergoes depolarization as you know left ventricle is little bit rotated backward as compared to the right ventricle so when major ventricular depolarization is going on major ventricular depolarization is normally going on downward and Leftward. leftward yeah. and slightly backward but if you look at what is this frontal plane you will just see vector is going down and left if you look at look at horizontal plane you will see it is left and back if you look at the horizontal, horizontal plane right now we are talking about frontal plane because limb leads are applied to scan the like limb leads scan the electrical activity of the heart in the frontal plane and chest leads scan the electrical activity electrical activity of the heart in horizontal plane so limb leads are in which plane frontal plane and chest leads are in which plane horizontal plane when you are able to look at frontal plane as well as horizontal plane you are looking from multiple angles on the same electrical activity of the heart is it clear now come back to this example how many leads we have bipolar limb leads we have lead number 1 2 and 3 clear yes. these are the exploring points here is the lead number 2 exploring point here is the lead number 3 is that right not in boy eyes now this vector is moving in the frontal plane it is moving downward and leftward this vector is moving downward and leftward this direction downward and leftward this is the axis of the lead what is this axis of the lead no it is the axis of the electrical vector of the heart this is axis of the electrical activity of the heart this is axis of the cardiac vector to be very specific because this is major ventricular depolarization right or ventricular depolarization vector mean rather mean qrs vector so here i am showing this mean qrs vector which represent ventricular depolarization its vector moves down and left in frontal plane so this it this vector has its own axis the elect electrical axis of this ventricular depolarization is down and left now listen this is axis of the lead number 1 which are horizontal plane is that right at zero angle with the horizontal this is axis of the lead number 2 which are directed downward and leftward this is axis of the lead number 3 three, three, which is directed downward and right rightward right, right. right and this is the electrical axis of the vector right all these three leads are looking at the same electrical activity of the heart all these three leads are looking at the same electrical activity of the heart but from different angles so will they record the same information or slightly different slightly, slightly, slightly different. different as i told you if girl is moving like that if boys angles are different they will look at different stuff is it clear and okay forget about girl uh, talk about me now let's suppose if someone is looking me from the front the picture is different someone look from here he will see this aspect of my face but if there is some problem here can he record no and someone very naughty looking from the top is that right his view will be totally different is that right but if i have a problem some pathology at the top of my head do you think from sides or from the front you can see that clearly better look from the top so in the same way 
when there are cardiac pathologies now listen clear clearly when there are cardiac pathologies which result in alteration in electrical activity of the heart such cardiac pathologies which alter the electrical activity of the heart to look where is the pathology and where is the change in electrical activity of the heart you need to look at the cardiac electrical vectors from different angles as if you have to see to make a real concept how is dr najib not only you need to look from the front you have to see from the sides you have to see from the top you have to see from the back then you have a three dimensional concept exactly who, what is the head and neck of dr najib in the same way to know exactly the electrical activity going in the heart you need to look from multiple angles or we can say we need to look from multiple leads we need to look from multiple leads, leads. now you understand why we need multiple leads so that we look at the electrical activity of the heart from multiple angles right so if there is a pathology right that may be recorded better by one lead and poorly by the other lead is that right come back this is a axis of the vector these are the axis of the lead now you are clear the difference in them yes. so in the books when you read ecg books somewhere they mention electrical axis of the lead then they are talking about this stuff if they talk about electrical axis of the cardiac vector then they are talking about this is it clear yes. now you see these three now we come back these three leads are looking at the same electrical activity but they will get different snapshots they will get different electrical pictures because recording of the angle is different clear let's come to this let's suppose we first look at the lead number 2 first we are looking at the lead number Two. If I'm looking at the lead number two, this is the line of V and of what is this? Electrical axis of the lead, and this is the electrical axis of the cardiac vector, QRS vector. Now, how much this will be? There will be positive deflection or negative deflection. It depends on that how much part of this vector is along the electrical axis of the lead. Again. if we have to decide how much this is able to scan this lead number 2 how much it can scan the electrical activity of the qrs vector it depends on how much component of the cardiac vector is parallel with the axis of the lead is that right now if you see electrical axis of the qrs vector in this diagram and electrical axis of the lead number 2 are almost parallel almost parallel. parallel to see exact components we can draw perpendicular from here yeah and perpendicular from here now this is yes this length of the vector is along the axis of the lead is that right this length of the vector is along the axis of the lead but if you try to record from here same electrical activity it will be the same or different yes. it will be different here you put perpendicular from here and perpendicular from here this is this component of the vector along this lead now you see along the lead number 2 qrs vector is project the projection of qrs vector is greater along the lead number 2 but projection of qrs vector along the axis of lead number 1 is less is it clear now you see the same vector how it will be perceived by perceived by the what is this third lead let's put the perpendiculars here one perpendicular goes like that and other perpendicular goes like that now this is the vector now you see 
it is the same vector same electrical activity of the heart but different leads are different leads are having different electrical voltage projected from the qrs vector to the electrical leads of the electrical axis of the lead here it is maximum why because vector is almost parallel with the axis here whole vector cannot be recorded by this because this is axis of the lead this is axis of the vector so only a component of vector can influence the lead here also axis of the lead and axis of the qrs vector are not parallel so only a component of it can is along with this axis of the lead is that right any question up to this now yes please so why do we always put the limb leads on the limb on the limbs to uh, to record the different to record the activity of the heart from different angles? Uh, how what do we determine the place of the limb? Okay, he is asking how how we determine the place of the uh, how we determine which electrode should be put at which place. That is what you are asking. I will explain in few moments when I go to Enthoven's triangle. For a while, you just trust me that in lead number one, right arm is. Negative, negative bipolar lead number right and left arm is positive. positive in lead number two right arm is negative, negative. and left leg is positive. positive and lead number three left arm is negative. negative and left leg is positive his question is why electrodes are arranged like this why not we put this negative and that positive this is your question okay let me answer first but you have detracted me no problem the problem is that Originally, whole this three lead system was made by uh, Mr. Anthovens, a scientist with the name of Anthovens. Now, normally, in most of the normal persons, electrical axis of the QRS vector is directed downward and leftward in the frontal plane. Actually, if you put a negative here, and positive there what was this deflection will be positive. positive if we put a negative here and positive there deflection will be still positive, positive. if we put a negative there and positive here still deflection will be positive. somewhat positive i think he wanted to see was some positive minded person he arranged the leads of electrode that in most of the people major qrs complex should be positive maybe one day i just Imagine he put positive here and negative there, and QRS become mostly negative, and it bothered him. So again, reverse the electrode. So originally, Mr. Anthovens decided to finalize the position of the electrode in such a way that when major ventricular depolarization is going on, QRS complex should be mainly positive. And as now listen carefully, as major ventricular depolarization vector has its axis downward and leftward to get positive deflection in all the leads he had to put the positive electrode either leftward or downward you got answer yes. so in lead number one where should be the positive electrode left side in lead number two it should be up or down down and lead number three positive electrode should be up or down no. down so you got your answer so it is a convention it is a convention it is conventional uh, that is why we call it there are 12 conventional ecg leads out of those 12 conventional ecg leads today we are talking about three conventional bipolar limb leads so this arrangement was actually originally introduced by Mr. Anthovens, is that right? Yes. Is it clear? Yes, yes. Actually, now come back for before I go. Now look, this is the now this is electrical QRS vector. Now I just call it QRS vector. Now this QRS vector, maximum it is deflected along, projected along which lead number two, right? When it is projected, a vector is moving. Yes. The girl is moving towards the positive electrode. So what happened? Deflection should be positive or negative? Positive. positive deflection. Right? Now imagine. Here it is. 
still vector the a component of this qrs vector is moving along the axis of the lead number one and positive end is directed towards the positive electrode so girl is still moving towards now that why a component of a girl don't ask which component right now this will give a positive deflection or negative positive. it will give mainly positive deflection but positive deflection here here this vector is smaller this projected vector is longer here magnitude is higher so deflection in lead number 2 will be more and deflection in lead number lead number 1 will be less is that right lead number 3 here in this example even it is less than lead number 1 so it will deflect is it clear now these things these things these are the elect electrical picture of the Q major ventricular depolarization recorded by lead number 2 by the recorded by the circuit of the lead number 2 along the axis of the lead number 2 and this is the electrical picture you know this electrical picture which is recorded this is called called lead pattern what is it called lead pattern. pattern this pattern is drawn by which lead lead number two. 2 is that right now come back here this is pattern which is recorded by lead number 1, one. one. and this is a pattern which is recorded by lead number 3, three. is that right yes. now these three patterns are there these are recorded by bipolar limb blades is it clear? Yes. One. Now, you must know the difference. When we are talking about a specific ECG lead, you should know what is the circuit of the lead, what is the axis of the lead, what is the pattern of the lead. Let's go back. This was the circuit of bipolar limb lead number one, which consists of positive and negative positive and negative electrode along with their wires on one side connected on the electrocardiographic machine other side applied on the body surface in such a way the negative electrode is on the right arm and positive electrode is on the left arm what was this circuit of the bipolar limb lead number one. One. one this was the circuit of the bipolar lead number one, one. then imaginary line drawn from the right shoulder because arm is just right arm is just electrical extension for our ECG purpose right arm is just electrical extension of right upper corner or shoulder right shoulder right so we can say what is this this what is the lead of L, uh, axis of the lead number one they are imaginary line drawn from what is this what is this right arm or right shoulder to the Left. left shoulder this is the axis of the lead and this graphic presentation of electrical activity of the heart which is recorded by the lead number one this is called pattern of the lead lead one so next time when you are studying the lead system most of the student where they get confused that somewhere books are talking about the circuit of the lead at other points they are talking about the axis of the lead and still other points they are talking about okay. pattern of the lead actually all of them are lead so next time when you think of a ECG lead you think of its circuit you think of its axis and you think of its pattern, pattern. is that right yes. and you must know that axis of the leads keep on changing when you with different leads with different exploring electrode at different position axis of leads are at different angles axis of the leads are at different angle but from different leads from different angles are looking at the same electrical axis of the heart or same electrical activity of the heart is that right and you must know that lead axis is a different thing and electric axis electrical axis of a cardiac vector is a different thing right and whatever cardiac whatever electrical axis of a cardiac vector is for example this is the electrical axis of q 
क्यू आर एस वैक्टर राइट ओनली अ कंपोनेंट ऑफ एट इज प्रोजेक्टेड टूवर्ड्स द एक्सिस ऑफ द लीड एंड दैट कंपोनेंट इज दैट कंपोनेंट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू ड्रॉ द पैटर्न ऑफ द लीड एम आई क्लियर एनी क्वेश्चन हियर देर इज नो क्वेश्चन ओके लेट्स हैव अ ब्रेक नाउ then we'll go into detail further we have just made the concept clear circuit of the lead axis of the lead pattern and this is basically arrangement of the making of the bipolar limb blades is that right after the break we'll come back and talk about uh, enthoven's triangle enthoven's law and triaxial reference system right right so in the previous lecture what we were talking about generally talking about the ecg leads and we only discussed that the word ecg lead should be imagined in three context at three level circuit of a lead electrical axis of the lead and pattern drawn by that specific lead is that right and also i, I explained why we need multiple leads because multiple leads are looking at the electrical activity of the heart from different angles right so the same electrical activity of the heart when it is it is looked from different angles then you are able to uh, detect different alteration in the electrical activity of heart and associated pathologies right and then i explained that some of the ecg leads are in frontal plane and other ecg leads are placed in horizontal, horizontal plane the frontal plane ecg leads are the limb leads the limb leads are recording the electrical activity of the heart in the frontal plane and chest leads are recording the electrical activity of the heart from the horizontal plane is that right and then i must mention the leads which are in the frontal plane as i told you these are the limb leads limb leads limb leads are actually there are three bipolar limb leads bipolar limb leads and there are three unipolar yes limb leads right today we are mainly discussing bipolar limb leads right limb lead number 1 2 and 3 in next lecture we'll talk about these three unipolar limb lead and after that we'll have a lecture uh, in which electrical activity of the heart is recorded in horizontal plane that is chest leads right and conventionally we apply six chest lead so conventionally we apply six chest lead three bipolar limb leads three unipolar limb lead added together how many are conventional ecg leads 12, 12 leads 12, 12. how many conventional lead, leads are there ecg leads 12, 12 leads so let's focus now onward lecture on bipolar limb leads right in detail especially in relation to the enthoven's triangle and enthoven's law okay let's go back and talk about this man here is your man and this is his what is it his trunk or torso here is right arm yes left arm right leg and left leg is it clear and here is your heart and in the heart let's suppose this is major ventricular depolarization this is a vector which is representing major ventricular depolarization it is in frontal plane it is downward and leftward oriented as we discussed previously as i told you that you are putting negative electrode on the lead number 1 you put the negative when you are making the circuit of the lead number 1 you put negative electrode on the right, right side. arm right. which is equivalent to putting negative electrode at this level and positive electrode you put it on the left wrist it is equivalent to equivalent to putting it here yes i will repeat it it's worth repeating the whatever electrical activity 
when heart is generating electrical activity through the body fluids and electrolyte it spreads all over the body whatever electrical activity is present at this angle shoulder the same electrical activity can be recorded and actually that is conducted and can be recorded from the right arm is that right so you have a choice either you put electrode here or anywhere along this but we prefer to put electrode on the wrist because it does not it's easier on the bony points secondly muscular electrical activity is not there is that right in the same way rather than putting on the shoulder conventionally uh, this positive electrode of the lead number 1 bipolar lead 1 is put on the left wrist rather than putting on the shoulder because both of these points are more convenient than putting the point on the shoulder in the same way when we are making lead number 2 so this is the axis of lead number yes now you will tell me this is axis of the lead number 1, 1. very good this is axis of the lead number 1, 1. right and here is what yes and this is the circuit of the lead number 1 is that right now if i make lead number 2 as you know that this is here and here we put positive electrode and yes it is equivalent to putting negative here is that right and positive here putting the positive electrode here and this is the axis of lead number 2 2 this is the axis of lead number 2 and here it is going to be what is it this is positive electrode terminal positive terminal attached with the positive electrode and negative terminal attached with the negative electrode this is the circuit of the lead number 2 this is the axis of the lead number 2 clear in the same way here you put the negative electrode and here you put the positive electrode and this is the axis of lead number okay rather than drawing drawing there drawing there it is practically actually it is putting over negative here and positive right and what is this yes this is negative electrode and here it is positive, positive terminal attached with the positive electrode and this is the circuit of lead number 3 say now if you look at the axis of these three leads lead number 1 lead number 2 and lead number 3 if you look at the axis of these three leads it makes almost a triangle almost an equilateral triangle is that right this equilateral triangle is called anthoven's triangle to make a perfect triangle maybe these positive electrode need to be put on the genitalia or something which is not a very i mean you know that so so rather than putting on genitalia or on the pubis we find it more convenient to put it on the left ankle remember on right ankle we put the earth electrode right so i will not talk about the right ankle in detail further right but it makes almost an equilateral triangle, triangle. so we can say lead number 1 axis of lead number 2 and axis of lead number 3 make an imaginary triangle around the heart here is your heart what is and now i'm going to define what is anthoven's triangle right you already know lead number 1 2 and 3 now i'm going to tell you what is anthoven's triangle. triangle anthoven's triangle is an almost equilateral triangle it is an equilateral triangle drawn around the heart or equilateral triangle having the heart at its center this triangle three sides are made by bipolar limb lead number 1 2 and 3 and this triangle is placed in the frontal plane on the body surface on the body surface in the frontal plane lead number 1 2 and 3 bipolar limb leads 
one two and three make a triangle around the heart and this is called Einthoven's triangle so you know what is Einthoven's triangle why it is called Einthoven's triangle because this triangle is made of these bipolar limb leads which were originally made by the Mr. Anthobans. Clear? Now, what is the importance of Anthobans triangle? Right? And what are the practical application of Anthobans law? Right now, I'm going to, into detail. Triangle, you already know. This is another thing which is called Anthobans law. Before I go into detail, I will tell you, I will put down the Anthobans law here. This is Anthobans law. And what is Anthobans law? And then I will explain. According to Anthobans law, the potential of lead number 2 is equal to, okay, I will repeat it in a different way. According to Anthobans law, whatever electrical potential or voltage, whatever electrical potential or voltage is recorded by lead number 1 and lead number 3, if you put them together, that should become equal to lead number 2. two. It means, in Thoven's law is lead number 1 plus lead number 3. Potential of lead number 1 plus potential of lead number 3 is equal to the potential of lead number 2. It's a very funny thing, you know. How come 1 plus 3 is 2? Usually 1 plus 3 is 4. I think this is the law made by the Anthoban's wife, it's angry wife logic. 1 plus 3 is equal to 2, right? But I will tell you, as, as far as ECG is concerned, and ECG leads are concerned, potential of lead number 1 and lead, lead number 3 really becomes equal to the lead number 2, how it becomes. Let's go to some practical talk. If you, as I told you, first I will talk about the lead number, what is this? one what lead, what lead number one is doing lead number one is recording the potential difference between the negative electrode and the positive electrode or we can say lead number one is recording graphically recording it's making qrs complex graphically recording potential difference between the right wrist right arm wrist and left arm wrist when mean QRS vector is working when QRS when major ventricular depolarization is going on when major ventricular depolarization is going on electrical current is spreading in the body and lead number one is recording that potential difference between the two to know the difference at these two points we must know what is the exact potential here and what is the exact potential there, then you know the difference in those potentials, right? Let's suppose for a moment, hypothetically we imagine that here at this point potential is 0 0.2 minus 0 0.2 millivolt. In, yes, in reference to the average body potential. Why? Because vector is moving downward and leftward so down and left side should become positive potential up and right should become negative. negative potential i will repeat it that when major ventricular depolarization is going on electrical vector of ventricular depolarization is moving down and left in the frontal plane so positive charges are moving down and left so down downside and left side it becomes positive. positive potential and of course right and up should become negative as compared to the average body potential so as compared to the average body potential at this point potential is 0.2 millivolt it's a very little potential that is why you cannot give electric shock to each other now here it is plus 0 0.3 millivolt 
and if you record absolute potential here it is okay I will put it here 1.0 millivolt here now at the apices of at the corner of this triangle I will put you what are the potentials there as compared to the average potential in the body is that right now if the needle is moving here now imagine when QRS complex is when uh, major ventricular depolarization is going on potential here is minus 0.2 millivolt and there it is plus 0 0.3 what is the difference in them you don't know mathematics minus 0.2 and plus 0.3 0.5 oh my god look I will put it here so that you can see it this is for zero line zero potential okay minus one minus two here plus one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve one point two it is 0.1 milli minus 0.1 millivolt this point is minus 0.2 millivolt so this is the potential here minus 0.2 and here it is what plus 0.3 so plus 1 plus 2 and plus 3 am I clear so this is the potential in the left arm and here is the potential in the right arm when these potentials are created when ventricular depolarization is going on you understand why and how now what is the difference in them look at it what is the difference in them difference is 0.5 millivolt and what is this lead this is lead number this is lead number one between this point and that point you are recording lead number one is that right and here is lower end left and lower okay now what will be the deflection in this needle there will be positive deflection of 0.5 millivolt you understand yes. it will be positive deflection of point 5 millivolt now on ECG paper as you know that there is a big square is that right now the grid of the ECG paper now I'm making here is in x-axis horizontal this is the time one small square is equal to 0 0.04 second I have explained it in the previous lecture that any this small square represents 0 0.04 second or big square represents 0 0.04 second into 5 0.2 second but in vertically if you look at vertical level one small square one small square vertically if there is a wave if any electrical activity is drawn like this it is 0 0.1 millivolt 0 0.1 millivolt, millivolt. If any electrical activity needle draws over one small square, it is how much? 0 0.1 millivolt. Is it clear? Yes. This is standard calibration of ECG in most of the countries. Is that right? Yes. Now come back. Lead number one will draw the difference of potential between negative electrode and positive electrode is how much difference is? 0.5 millivolt minus 0.2 plus 0.3 so how many small squares QRS should go up 5.5 it should go 5 squares up let me make the squares let's suppose this is the baseline this one 1 2 3 4 5 is that right so what will happen of course uh, if you want I can draw vertical too but in every diagram I will not draw the vertical okay now what really we see 
this QRS complex is drawn over by, by the lead number one in this spe specific example by the axis of the lead number one when major ventricular depolarization is going on the QRS electrical vector is graphically recorded along the axis of lead number one with the height of net height of five small square. Square. square is that clear yes no problem now we come over lead number three now you will tell me In lead number three here the negative electrode is at which position plus three and positive electrode is at one point okay again this is the lead number three right when this vector is generated in the heart negative pole is recording negative electrode is recording plus 0 0.3 millivolt and positive pole is recording plus 1.0 millivolt now what is the difference in these two because it has to record the difference this circuit of lead number three has to record the potential difference between the what is this left wrist and the left ankle and potential here is plus 0.3 here it is plus point uh, plus 1.0 so what is the difference 0 0.7, 0 0.7 millivolt very good so <laughs> here the lead number which one three. here was the lead number one mm -hmm. here I put the lead number three so it will go from point 0.3 from point 0.3 up to point 0.1 zero. Zero. from point 0.3 to so point 0.3 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now here is, what was there, your, your 0 point, 0 point, I will put it in different color, this was your 0 point. Is that right? How much is the total position? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Is that right? Yes. Right. How much it should swing upward? 0.7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Up to this point. So this should be the voltage. How many millivolt? Point. 7 is it clear from where this point 7 came the voltage of lead number 3 from where it came the difference of voltage potential recorded between the negative electrode and positive electrode of lead number 3 so what was the deflection here positive how much 0.7 millivolt here it was positive how much? 0 .5. 0 0.5 millivolt. Now if it is 0 0.7 millivolt, now let's suppose we make our let's suppose this is the thick line. You understand? When this needle will deflect positively from the zero line, how much it will deflect? If it is the zero line, if one small square is 1.1 millivolt, so how many small squares? Seven. 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 So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this will be the height of QRS in lead 3 you understand from where this came this is normal so in normal if this is a normal heart right producing the normal QRS vector then a pattern drawn by the lead 1 will be 5 
millivolt high and pattern drawn by the lead number 3 will be 7 millivolt high or 7 small square now we come to this here it's very simple now if we come to the lead number 2 what is the potential here 0.2 minus 0 0.2 and what is here 1 How, what is the difference 10 positive unit 2 minus unit total difference in uh, these two electrode is 12 so this will extend lead number 2 will extend from minus 2 to plus minus 0.2 millivolt up to plus 10 millivolt and how much it is yes lead number 2 is equal to how many millivolt 1.2 millivolt how many small squares 12 small squares because one small square is equal to 0.1 millivolt now so if we draw it here let me make the grid again 1 2 and 3 and here are your vertical lines 1 2 3 4 and 5 and I will make it horizontal to 1 2 3 4 5 this is your thick line here is also thick line then 1 2 3 4 and 5 right now the same vector when it is same electrical activity when it is going on we are simultaneously recording the electrical activity by lead number 1 and 3 and 2 while lead number 1 was producing the deflection of 5 small squares and lead number 3 was producing the deflection of 7 small square at that very time lead number 2 will record how much 12 Is it clear from where all these things came? So in Thorben's law is that voltage or potential in lead number 1 plus potential in lead number 3, three sum of these two potential must make equal to the potential of lead number 2. It's very easy to infer that potential of lead number 2 should be maximum because electrical axis of QRS vectors are very parallel with the axis of the lead number 2 so lead number 2 should have projection of the full vector and lead number 1 and 3 will have only a projection of component of the vector but these two component together will make this one is it clear this also shows another aspect that if voltage of any two leads are known if any two leads voltage is known you can inf determine the voltage of the third lead is it clear any question up to this this is in Thoven's law what is the importance of in Thoven's law it has many importances one of the simplest thing is that if whenever you hold that 12 lead ECG paper just put a put an eye on the voltage of lead number QRS in lead number 1 2 and 3 and determine the sum of the 1 and 3 if they are making 2 it simply means that electrodes applied on the limbs are right rightly applied because if you wrongly apply the electrode then 1 plus 3 will not become equal to 2 1 plus 3 will not become equal to the 2 is that clear any question up to this yes if 1 plus 3 is not equal to 2 does that indicate any sort of pathology we will talk about that later yes but generally when you hold the ECG 1 plus 3 should be equal to the 2 and right now I'm going to explain that if cardiac vector changes its positions in different disease conditions QRS vector may change its direction if changes its direction still pattern in lead number 1 2 or 3 will change pattern in lead number 1 2 and 3 will 
change, but law will be the same. 1 plus 3 is equal to 2. I will explain now how it happens. Just to make this more clear, bipolar limb leads, Enthoven's triangles, and Enthoven's law, I'm going to make different situations. I'm going to change the direction of, I'm going to analyze the QRS vector pointing in different directions and seeing what is the result, result, resultant pattern in the lead number 1, 2 and 3 and does the Anthoven's law hold well or not? I will make uh, three triangles here. Now you understand that these triangles are made by lead number 1, 2 and 3. Of course, this is lead number 1, 2, 3. Another patient, lead number 1, 2 and 3. Another patient, 1, 2 and 3. Remember, in Thoban's triangle is one. a hypothetical triangle made by the three bipolar limb leads around the heart in the frontal plane on the body surface. And in the frontal plane, this these three leads which are making a triangle are looking at the electrical of activity of the heart and recording it graphically. Done? Come back. We do one by one. Let's suppose there is a person where truly, this is the previous example, vector is directed downward and leftward. This is what we discussed previously. We take another patient. Here the vector is parallel to the lead number 2. two. Okay. Now we take another patient in which vector is parallel to the lead number 1. We still take another patient where vector becomes parallel to the lead number 3. three. What happens to the pattern of pattern drawn by lead 1, 2 and 3 in these conditions? This we have already discussed right here was negative positive yes here you speak negative positive negative positive right vectorial analysis first of all this because it is parallel with the lead number two so full vector is projected along the axis of lead number two axis of the vector are parallel with the axis of the lead so this will be your projected vector and this will be your what is this QRS in lead number 2 this pattern should be positive because project in the projected vector still positive charges are moving towards the positive electron right but if we have done it like uh, that what part of the vector remember here the girl is moving down and left here the girl is moving leftward which lead will be most happy lead number one. one here if girl is moving down and rightward which boy will be the most happy lead number three you understand it now and you can guess which is about to get the maximum deflection right so this is the vector here and if we draw here along the lead number three now you see this was the normal deflection this was lead number two this is the deflection of lead number 2. Do you think lead number 1 will be equal to 2 or less than 2? Less than 2. And lead number 3 will be? Less than 2. But they will be with such potential when you add these two, they should become equal to this. Is that right? Lead uh, 1 and plus lead 3 is equal to lead number 2. Clear? Now we change it. See what happens. Here again, we need to put it, yes, negative, positive, positive negative, positive, positive terminal electrode, negative and positive. positive. If vector is, let's suppose rather than electrical vector is directed downward and leftward, hypothetically we are talking about due to some disease condition, right, uh, it is moving from right to the left then it becomes very very parallel to the 
lead number one. Now, maximum projected vectors and magnitude will be along the lead number one. one. Right? But projected vector along the lead number two. Now we have to see along the lead number two. What happens? We have to take a perpendicular here and take it to the tip of the vector and tail of the vector. Is that right? No problem. And now you see, here is the real drama along the lead number three. three. Now perpendicular should come like this. This and right? Now this is the positive tip. So direct projected vector is directed upward and in lead number three, upward and negative. leftward. So it is moving towards the negative, not positive. So what does it mean? Here, lead number two, yes, in this triangle, although I should draw it here, okay, lead number two, it should be equal to sum of lead number one plus lead three. three. Now lead number two, this is this case, in lead number first one, one is the maximum, what? Okay. Deflection. One is the maximum deflection plus lead number three, yes, it, what is it? Is it positive or negative? Negative. negative? negative. And lead number two will be very small deflection or big deflection? Small. Biggest will be here. Small. Now you see. What is happening actually? Let's suppose this lead number one is 10. What is this? 10 millivolt. And lead number three is how much negative? Seven. 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 And what is the net? Point three. Point 0.3 Do you get it or not? Yes. Right? Or I should draw it other ways that here it is lead number one. one most happy boy it's moving towards the positive electron very parallel is that right? Yes. It's 10 this is going to be negative this is going to be negative because positive charges are moving towards the negative electrode or positive charges are moving away from the so if girl is moving like that this boy will perceive it's coming to him and this will perceive it's going away now it is down and left so some component he will be still happy at least she is moving somewhat leftward so lead number two is this so what will be the result lead number one very positive and lead number two, when you add them, positive suppose 10 squares and this is deflected downwards 7 squares. So net is 3 and this will be equal to 3 small squares. squares. Or we can say if it is 1.0 millivolt upward and this is 0.7 millivolt downward, then it will be 0.3 millivolt upward. upward. So it will hold true. How it will hold true? 2 is equal to? 1 plus 3. What was 1 here? Positive millivolt plus negative 0.7 millivolt. And both of them added together, it will become 0.3 millivolt. You see, vector has changed its position, but Enthoven's law is holding true. Is that right? We we'll take another example. If vector is moving downward and rightward, I mean, normally vector is directed downward and leftward. It was in this example. In second example, I swing it like that. It was moving purely along the axis of lead number one, and that became the strongest. Now I'm saying vector is moving in this direction, parallel with lead number three. If it is moving parallel, then strongest deflection should be in lead number 3. three. And weaker deflection will be in lead number 1. But here, positive pole is here. So it is directed like that. So it should be positive deflection, negative. 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 And along this, positive. Now in this case, you look at it.
now you see let's suppose maximum deflection was this it was point 1 uh, suppose 1.0 millivolt clear it's a full length here it is partial and here also it is partial I think I should make the same color so that you don't get confused which I was following right now you understand this vectorial analysis this is a real vector now it was most parallel with this so it was the highest deflection it is having some negative, negative deflection the rule should be 2 is equal to 1 plus, one plus 3 let's suppose 1 uh, uh, 3 is 10, 10 small squares and 1 is 2 minus, minus, 2 minus small squares right minus 0.2 millivolt you can understand how much this should be plus 8 millivolt or if you draw the pattern you can see very clearly that highest pattern should be here is that right it is little negative, negative. when you add 1 and 3 then net effect will be positive okay. 2 but it will be less than least number, number 3 so it's holding true or not yet true. so what we are learning up to now that as you are changing the position of the electrical axis of the vector electrical axis of the vector change electrical axis of the lead do not change because if electrical axis of the lead change then lead number changes you are understanding we are only discussing bipolar limb leads right 1 2 and 3 in and Thoven's triangle now another example okay I really want to print in your mind how the graphic presentation comes now these are three again now you imagine vector is directed directly purely downward in this corner lower apex of the triangle second example I will take the vector is directed to the left corner. left corner of the triangle another example if vector is somehow directed to this corner and we will see what is the vectorial analysis how the voltage which are perceived by the leads how they draw graphically and eventually still and Thoman's law hold true, holds true. Imagine. Now it's very easy. If it is directed downward, again you know, positive, positive, yes, negative, negative. Here it is positive and here it is negative. If vector is directed like that, draw the perpendicular here and here. Now vector is this and this. And what will be drawn here? along lead one zero because this vector is now qrs vector is now perpendicular to the lead number one if it is perpendicular to the lead number one if there is any deflection here if there is any deflection here that will be biphasic whatever it is positive same degree it is negative so net is zero, zero. you remember that yes, sir. as i told you that this lead vector is going like that whatever it is coming the same is going away you remember that so now you imagine the vector projected vector along the lead number 2 and along the lead number 3 is equal projected vector along the lead number 2 and 3 is equal, equal and both are positive and this is either 0 or same degree positive negative so we can consider it 0 now if you see for example it is 7 millivolt high it is also 7 millivolt high and it is net effect zero so hold that lead number two plus lead number two is equal to one plus, one plus three. three now what is the three seven. 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 this is seven and what is one zero. zero and what is two equal to that yes. is it clear yes. 
let's go to the how if vector is directed leftward and upward in the corner of the this apex of the influence triangle again how you would hold it perpendicular drawn from here and perpendicular drawn from here the vector is going in this direction and projected vector is going into that direction and of course this will be considered zero, zero. so we will not talk about it because vector is perpendicular to this lead is it clear now imagine both of these vectors have the same magnitude this vector and this vector has same Magnet. magnitude it means the mean qrs vector which is projected along the lead number one and lead number three they have the same magnitude so they will have the same degree of deflection but here vector is moving towards the positive electrode and here vector is moving away from the positive electrode so here will be positive deflection and here will be negative, negative deflection of equal degree right let's suppose if here it is positive 0.1 then it will be negative Five. sorry if it is positive suppose 0.8 8 small square this will be negative 0.8 small, small square i should make it later right and this is zero so what will be how will be the enthalpy law 2 is equal to 1 plus 3 2 should be zero is equal to 1 is positive and same degree 3 is negative and equal to zero clear and the last example i hope by this time things should be crystal clear projected vector along the lead number one yes it will be positive deflection negative negative, negative because it is moving away from the positive and what is this lead number negative, negative. Lead number two, two. and here also deflection will be negative. negative negative and here it will be zero because it's going perpendicular to that right now you put it here uh, here it is a negative deflection here it is also negative. negative deflection but both vector length is equal so both are same degree negative now it is lead number two it is lead number one and here is lead number three so what we really learn here that lead number two plus is equal to one plus three right if it is 1 plus 3 then naturally what is 2 2 is so negative. negative is equal to negative. 1 is negative same degree negative same degree negative. negative both of them are same degree negative and plus 0 so 2 is equal to sum one. of 1 and 3 so this is what I'm trying to tell that in Thoven's law states that electrical activity of let's suppose QRS complex or electrical activity of ventricular depolarization which result into mean QRS vector that will produce deflections in such a manner in lead number 1, 2 and 3 that when you measure their voltages the potential of lead number 2 should be equal to the sum of the 1 and 3 if all three leads are recorded simultaneously if all these three bipolar limb leads are recording simultaneously right so this was vectorial analysis and any question you have any confusion about are you clear how lead number 1 2 and 3 bipolar limb leads are made yes, yes sir. and you know why a positive electrode is always put either to the left side or to the down yes, sir. right you know what is in Thoven's triangle yes, sir. you know what is in Thoven's law yes, sir. now by these diagrams you know that electrical vector of the heart can be analyzed along the axis of lead number one two and three what we learn from this whatever is the electrical activity in the, in the heart whatever electrical vector is produced by the electrical activity of the heart that vectorial electromotive force can be analyzed 
along the axis of lead number 2 1 and 3 right but what is the relationship of these leads with each other what are the relationships of these leads with each other or more specifically now we are going to another concept how these three leads axes how these three leads axes are oriented in relation to each other how these three leads lead number one two and three bipolar limb leads their electrical axes are oriented in comparison to each other so let's do that comparison it's not that difficult because if we know those angles then just looking at the patterns in ECG we can determine the axis of the QRS complex mean QRS complex axis now I will just explain what is the relationship of bipolar limb lead number 1, 2 and 3 and their orientation in reference to each other Here is your man. Now he's very happy because he has learned a lot. Here is your, uh, suppose. We are putting the heart in the center of the chest, hypothetically, right? And what you know? You know about the Enthoven's triangle? I will make the Enthoven's triangle, right? Minus positive. What is this? Read number one. Minus and positive. It's lead number two. two. Minus negative and positive. Lead number three. three. And what is this in Thoven's triangle? Now we have to see how the leads are in reference to each other. Look at it. Slide lead number one. If this is the lead number one, slide it towards the heart, to the center of the triangle. Slide. We will put these leads on each other. We will put the axis of these three leads on each other and see how they cross each other to determine the angles in between them. Right? Let's put, we slide this lead here. If axis of this lead, we slide to this point of the heart, it's a straight lead. What is this lead representing this line? Lead number? One. One. Is that right? The negative on this end and positive on this end. Okay, I will make it really uh, blue so that you don't get confused due to color change. If I slide it down just to see what is the relationship in angulation with each other, what is this? Lead number one. Now we slide this to the center. Right? Before I do that, I just put a circle here. Now if this is a circle, this is 90 degree and this is 0 and 180 degree right let's divide the circle into components if this is 0 degree and here it is 180 degree plus negative now conventionally when we are talking about orientation of the axis of the lead when we are talking about orientation of the axis, axis of the leads in frontal plane uh, this is 0 degree horizontal as you move downward you put it plus sign because normally it is directed downward and Left. leftward if you are moving from here upward we put it a Minus. 7 a negative, negative sign so now you imagine if it is 0 then it should be plus 90, 90. 90. 
and this should be negative 90 and this should be from here plus 180 or from here negative 180 is it clear now another thing let's draw it further 30 degree if it is 0 30 degree and 30 degree so it is plus how much 30 it is plus 60 and this is plus 90 30 and 30 what is plus 120 plus 150 and plus 180 if you move here from here to here is 90 degree divide into two part this is minus 30 this is minus 60 here it is minus 120 here it is minus 150 is it clear now you imagine you took this lead and put it here so what is the angle of orientation of lead number one zero we are uh, referring to the positive electrode exploring electrode where the voice naughty boy's eye is there so it is this axis of electrical axis of the lead in the frontal plane in the frontal plane it is oriented at zero degree angle clear now you take this this and take it same parallel fashion and put it here if you put it here this is lead number two, two. two positive is here so what is the angle of orientation of lead number two plus 60 degree is it clear now we take what is this lead number three and we take it and bring it parallel here at this point and what it will be positive 120 now these three leads when they put it together they make a tri there are three leads so we call it tri axial reference system where we can see the orientation of the axis of the leads what are these these are the axis of the leads these are the axis of the leads in frontal plane we are looking how they are angulated in reference to each other so i can bring it out just to make it clutter free rapidly i will make it this is 0 to 180 and tell me rapidly what is this minus 90 in ecg reference and plus 90 now if this is lead number one orientation is zero because positive is here it is lead number what is it positive 60 degree and it is lead number three and what is it positive 120 right its negative end will be minus 60 but we will not talk about that because we are more concerned with the so what does it mean that if your heart is here if your heart is here whatever electrical activity in the heart is going on now look at the same thing with a different perspective if this is your heart let's suppose and these leads are crossing in the midpoint of the heart then lead number lead number one is looking from the left side from the left, left side right at zero degree angle to the heart bipolar limb lead one bipolar limb lead two is looking from down to upward and from down to upward and rightward to the heart from 60 degree angle and lead number three is looking to the heart from down from down to the up and rightward from down it is looking up and rightward left, left. sorry from down to the heart leftward at what angle 120 degree so these three leads are making this tri axial reference system but actually in the frontal plane when we truly record the electrical activity of the heart we want to record not only from three angles because these three angles 
these three angles made by bipolar limb lead one two three they were made by whom anthomans mr anthomans made it after that another doctor came he said no i want to put more angles i want to put more boys there to look at that sexy hot girl how she is moving is that right so the other doctor which i will tell you in next lecture he devised unipolar limb leads which i will discuss in next lecture and those were their axes were put somewhere in between you understand it so in this way every 30 degree different leads were there with their positive or negative electrode right but again i will repeat we today we learn only about triaxial reference system made by the lead number bipolar limb lead number 1 2, 2 and 3 in next lecture to this frontal plane we'll add three more leads which are called unipolar, unipolar limb lead actually we call them unipolar augmented limb leads or augmented unipolar limb leads why they are called unipolar leads why they are called augmented, augmented unipolar leads and why their angle of orientations are different than the bipolar limb leads and what kind of pattern they make we'll talk next lecture so what is our next lecture about that is about the electrical circuit of unipolar augmented limb leads about the axis of the unipolar limb leads and about the pattern drawn from the unipolar limb lead class discuss